701. And if you'd all stand, Kirk is going to start us off. Silence. Number three, uh, communication from patrons. So we'll open the floor. Yes. State your name, please, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody might not know me. <laughs> well, I'm Catherine Thompson, and I'm a grandma. And I wanted to say to the board, I go into those bathrooms, and I really don't think in all the years my kids and grandkids <laughs> were here, I never walked into such a beautiful place. I was thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you go in the women's? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in the men's. Well, the men's is, I go in the you men's. should go in there. I'll take you in there after. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie will go with us. <laughs> Any other comments? Yes. I just wanted to thank the board. I think we have three board members going off, and um, to the entire board and to the three members going off, I just wanted to say thank you for all of your service. It's not always uh, an easy task to be on the school board. I know sometimes there are uh, very difficult decisions to make. I know you guys have um, upheld the school and the student single one, and I just appreciate that, and I appreciate all of your service. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number four. We have some slides that uh, Ned's going to just speak about about accomplishments, Argus accomplishments from this current past year. Well, as we're entering 2018, and I included 2017, the last part of that, the spring part of it, uh, a lot's been happening. It's, we're finally ending 2018 here and things are being finished. I just wanted to run through some of the really amazing things that have taken place in, uh, in Argus. We'll talk about it. So we negotiated. We had a new contract with our teachers for a two-year contract, which is sort of unusual and was very productive. And uh, some of the bullets there, the salary increases for our teachers, uh, extracurricular schedule additions uh, with our advanced classes and our master's degree in reading, academic needs, uh, a couple other things, corporation testing, auditorium manager, next slide. Sometimes you just have to do a little review what all has happened in the last while. Um, we did boiler replacements for operating a lot more efficiency and saving a lot of energy with the boiler replacements. So window weather seals replaced. That's also been very energy efficient. Uh, we, a year ago, it's about a year ago at this time, we did painting in gym three and doors and secondary hallways. We did paving and driveways and striping, uh, reestablished the uh, administrative office, uh, reestablished the elementary office. Uh, we did carpeting in the rooms listed there. And it's a sort of precursor to the major project that's coming up. Next slide. Uh, we instituted a new evaluation system to make it consistent for all employees. Um, it's an Argus modified RISE evaluation system and it has uh, four categories for all our employees. Highly effective, effective, needs improvement, and satisfactory. 
Uh, we have a standards for success software evaluation system that goes with that. We've established new Argus school calendars. We've been recognized as the AP tip in um, school of the year nomination and teacher of the year nomination. The second one for two years in a row and that was by Notre Dame recognizing Argus and many, many schools in it. Um, we are certainly one of the smallest but uh, most highly recognized. So congratulations to Argus and our kids and teachers. A college board top four AP school, uh, library fair, uh, library book fair. Um, actually that's the largest uh, profit we've ever had and just concluded. Um, established the Argus Academy, alternative program for our challenge students and credit recovery. Uh, staff education classes, new signage and graphic, safety graphics. Um, enter our buildings, you'll see the new safety graphics. Um, main entrance, elementary, exterior siding. The new thing is just developing Argus history photo photograph display outside the uh, main, main gym. Updating district website to campus suite, using data to drive growth and instruction. A facility needs assessment was done in October 2017, and the Teacher Academy was established summer 2018 for our teachers. Our teachers actually came to school for a couple of weeks, and very productive. And actually, they volunteered their time for a very small stipend, and we had 90-some percent of our teachers come during the summer. So that's very impressive by our teachers, so I compliment them. Um, financial stability is one thing that I really felt was important and the board felt it's important. I feel like we've really achieved that. Um, stable 2017, 18, and 19 budgets accomplished. We're going to talk about that a little later. Um, we just got our budget order for the state today for 2019, so we're still working through details on that. But we've reimbursed our general fund, we've increased our rainy day fund, our cash reserves are increased. We're going to talk a little more about that when we look at the end of 2018. Uh, redone our sound system in Gym 1, and we also made the college board AP district honorable. So lots of honors with our advanced placement classes. We had all state marching band participants. Next slide. Quite a few FFA things there quiz bowl, forestry senior team, dairy judging, dairy showmanship, dairy foods, uh, national team plays thirds. We started our lacrosse program, this lacrosse club, boys soccer sectional championship, uh, developed the chess club. Next slide, I think we got some more coming here. Scholarships, uh, we gave out over 44,000 scholarships, marching band first place, the Blueberry Festival. And we had a student win the W. B. Hawkins winner for the Bi County, created elementary, that's a repeat, summer remodeling projects. We actually just completed those recently. Brand new security on all our entrances, all our hallways, all our cameras. Uh, remodeling the paint carpet ceilings. Um, big thing was our restrooms and bringing them up to code. We appreciate the comment on that. And uh, yes, um, a lot of that work will never be seen, but it's been very quality work because Something interesting about the Army schools, many schools back in the day were built this way, there's tunnels under this school. And all the pipes and all the thing goes under. Well, we found out that we had been, those pipes have been leaking and running water into those tunnels for a long time. And those repairs are done, and that's gonna help us with our energy a lot. One of the pipes was a hot water pipe and just ran all the time until we got it under there. So, uh, some excellent work behind the scenes that's gonna help the whole school team. Uh, etymology team, uh, cast and tourney champs in basketball, WSB TV, I love to read winner, three years, FSSA certification by state for preschool and preschool edition, robotics team went to state, kickboards, minds in motion, implemented random acts of kindness, implemented steam night, science, technology, arts, and math, geography B, spelling B, one more. <laughs> There's the one, new ADA compliant restrooms. And really, we did not meet code for handicapped children and that, and so we do now. And that, that's a big step forward by school. Day. Established the Student Commons Center, did the interior graphics, but mentioned new camera security. We did the main hallways, carpet base, and painting. Um, as we did this project, we removed the asbestos. So the asbestos was abated and removed. Uh, replaced the leaking pipes and tunnels, we mentioned that. 
we completely redid the weight training room. So now it meets code and it's a very nice place for our athletes and staff to work out. And then the ADA compliance again. We redid the HVAC, the heating and cooling here in the library. New agriculture furnace brought our ceilings up to code. The interesting thing, our old ceiling tiles were not code compliant. Now the new ceiling tiles are. And when they, I'm sure when they were installed back in the day, they were code compliant. The codes changed over the years. Uh, upgraded the lighting in the hallways and areas. Partnership with the town on having a school security officer, resource officer, and we're working on that. And training is begin. We have a homeland security grant for our for our security officer. So we're looking forward to implement that as we enter 2019. And we just had a audit on our security plans and our new security things and the state of Indiana gave us a first class pass on our security audit for Argus schools, so that's very good. And we are completing an auditorium needs assessment and we'll soon have the final report on that to be shared. Is that the end of my list? This is your last one. This is my last one. <laughs> Left off the girls soccer team. Yeah, I think it's coming. Oh, <laughs> second one. <laughs> There were two different years, so they got two slides. Yeah. Forestry team, second place, and I probably left off a lot of things, but I didn't try to. Set first team, second place at state in the elementary, girls soccer sectional championship. We had two cross country uh, regional qualifiers. Uh, we finally disposed of our old boilers. We got rid of some obsolete records, about 50 years of them, disposed of them properly. A U903 a teacher nomination, two years RMC Operation Roundup Award and STEM partnership with the Geneva Center. And I'm sure I left somebody off the list, but the point is, lots of good things happening at Argus, and I'm really proud as superintendent to compliment our students, our staff, our community, parents, the whole crew, because this is good stuff. And uh, probably the one thing I would criticize, it's sort of a well-kept secret, we need to broadcast what's, what's here for children and what children can experience here. It'd be a great education going to Argus. So. Lord, I just want to say thank you. And with that, there's three of you here. But this is your last official meeting. Doesn't mean we won't continue to work, expect you to continue to work for Argus. But I do want to recognize the three of you and uh, jump in at any time, Mr. President. But first of all, yeah. <laughs> Doug, about three and a half years, the way I figured. 2015, 2018. Yeah, I understand. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. And Brett, eight and a half years? Yep. Is that correct? 2010, 2018. Congratulations. Thank Thanks, Brett. And Kurt, by your extra stint here, you actually uh, got rep by a few times. 2009 to 2018. Thank you, sir. So, anything else? I want the superintendent just to say thank you to all of you. I really believe the district's moving the right direction. I'm proud of what we're accomplishment, accomplishing. And I really look, 2019 is only going to be better, and more is going to be accomplished. We're on a roll and we want to intend to stay there. So thanks. I appreciate it. Mr. President, that's all I have on that. Okay. Well, I'll just echo Ned. I appreciate you guys too. I've learned a lot in the two years that I've been on the board from you guys. I've got a lot to learn yet. <laughs> and you have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> There's always more to learn. I know. Okay. Uh, item number five approval of the minutes from the regular meeting from November 19th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. And do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the minutes from the regular meeting. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Number six, personnel changes. I think they're going to come up on the Yeah, screen. we're going to put them up here. And there we go. Oh, good. That's bigger. Good. So we have two uh, employments and two resignations. If I could yes, just mention right a in. little bit on the appointment. Uh, Elizabeth Schmelz is coming to us from uh, 
retired uh, guidance counselor from John Glenn. It's a temporary position. Uh, we have a medical leave and a maternity leave. But I'd also like to introduce the board and uh, let him say something if you so approve. But I uh, <laughs> recommend uh, Jeff Chickie as our new technology leadership director. Uh, Jeff's coming to us from Purdue University where he's currently working. Before that, he taught biology at Hebron, and he taught at Rensselaer. He's been a high school teacher, a junior high middle school teacher, and teaching professors and kids, or whatever Purdue assigns you to, Jeff, but we welcome you aboard. And so that would be our two employments, and we have a couple of resignations with some paraprofessionals, one retiring and one moving, and we recommend approval of our personnel at this time. Got a motion? So moved. A second. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Jeff, yeah, I was going to offer you. You want to say anything? I, I just want to say uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'm I'm really humbled to have this opportunity. I really look forward to working with teachers and students to create just amazing learning experiences and partnering to uh, really figure out ways that we can use the technology that's already here. And, and I knew that it was the right decision when I showed my eight-year-old son the mascot here, and he's like, that's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Yeah. Thank you and welcome. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. If there's no further discussion, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay, uh, next item is a reminder to everyone that the January board meeting is moved up earlier, one week earlier than normal. It will be Monday night, January 14th. And that's due to we have to reorganize and have the new year, all the red tape and state laws by the 15th. So we have to move the board uh, meeting up one. Um, item number eight, approval of renewal rates for the 2019 property Casualty insurance with Escrift, can I say? Escrift. Escrift. E S C R F T. And we put a slide up here, board, of what our quote is on this. But the real good news, about halfway down where it says 2019 renewal costs, right underneath, you see in parentheses there, minus 15%. Well, I think all of us know when other insurance rates go down 15%, it's a good day which means we've had a very good year experience-wise and being in this consortium with a bunch of other school districts, uh, very good news. And over the years, we have saved a lot of money being with this consortium. So I would recommend renewal of our liability and transportation, all our insurances, not health, not on employees, but for the school district, got our liability and our protection and our transportation insurance. Minus 15%. Uh, Recommend approval for 2019. Okay. Do we have a motion to that effect? And a second? Okay, any discussion or further questions? Okay, all in favor of the motion signify with an aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Item number nine, approval of administrative contracts for the next two years, it looks like, next two school years. Board, I sent this in your packet, our recommendations on our administration team, and Indiana has an interesting law that uh, administrative contracts automatically roll over come January 1. So it seems to make sense that the board take action so it's not just a rollover and that there's an official action on it. So I've uh, given you a recommendation for our principals, our AD slash Dean of Students, um, and uh, the contract you just approved for Mr. Chickie and uh, myself, uh, no salary adjustment or anything for myself. <coughs> if you will, I plan to be here another year. And so that's the decision there, but salary adjustment for the principals. And a new thing that uh, we're adding is potential of a uh, health savings account for the administrators. Administrators uh, put a thousand dollars of their own money in, then the district will put a match in on health savings account. But if they don't put money in, there's no change on our 
from one of benefits is establishing an opportunity for health savings accounts. So as outlined, I recommend a renewal of the administrative contracts at this time. Okay, we have an opportunity to look those over. Is there a motion? A second. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, any uh, discussion or questions on the administrative contracts? Are we already in discussions with the HSA? Like, we going to provide that? Yes, so we've started that and we're working through our uh, insurance cooperative uh, with MACE okay. and to set that up. And so that'll be set up as a district and then. And that's sort of, as we're going forward, we're going to address our benefits with other employee groups insurance. So this is just leading in with what we'll be working with with our other staff members. So, but we want to set that up. So here's how the district handles it if the employee chooses to participate. That's an if, because it takes an investment by the employee to get this benefit. Good question. Uh, anything further? Okay, we'll call for a vote on item nine, administrative contracts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item 10, approval of resolution number 2018-002, the sale of real estate. Board, we, last month you approved the sale of the lots for to the Redevelopment Commission, and this time we need a resolution to that effect, since been approved and the attorneys are now starting to work to transfer uh, the deeds and that and so we need this resolution approved and signed that basically exactly what you said last month is you did put it in a resolution form to move forward with the state from one nonprofit to another nonprofit and so the resolution needs to be approved to from Argus Community Schools uh, get Bay and Morrison warrants to Argus Community Development Corporation Exact description and exact numbers that you approve. So recommend approval of the resolution and sign it, signing it afterwards if you so approve. Okay, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or questions concerning the resolution? Okay, call for a vote. All in favor of the resolution approving the resolution? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Stay. Okay, item number 11. Uh, approve the 2018 year end budget closing and transfers. This is a yearly thing, board, as we close out the 2018 budget. It zeroes out the accounts and closes down 2018 budget so we can the 2019 budget but basically it is the computer program that will bring uh, 2018 to a resolution there'll be a full report at our january board meeting after we do that on that but uh, we'd ask your approval to uh, close out the 2018 year end budget sounds like a necessary thing it is, is a very necessary a, is thing. there a motion so moved and a second Okay, any discussion, questions? Okay, all in favor of approving the year end 2018 budget? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. 12, construction report. But I think we have something to pay. Yeah, you got a bill to pay. But, uh, we're right at the end of the construction report, and what we're doing now is uh, we're at the end of the process. We got several things left. But we got some paint areas that need to be touched up. We have two doors that need to be replaced. The new doors are actually here. They just need to be rehung, and that's because they weren't finished properly. And so they're getting replaced according to our specifications. So we're right at the end of it. So our architect has certified a current payment due of $42,464.65. And that leaves balance to finish, which is all retained, which is retained is 10% of the project. We're going to hold on to that money until everything clears and all that. So 
the balance in retaining shall be 87,115.11. But this payment, if approved for 42,464.65, is the final construction payment, and that's just when we release the retaining that these final jobs are done. So I'd recommend approval since our architect has certified the work's been complete. Okay. We have a motion. I move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion or questions concerning this? So if I understand that correctly, all we will owe will be the retainers then, yeah. Right. And At so a later time. And okay. just for the board's information, we are still we are concluding this project twenty five thousand under the contracted number. So the good news, we're under budget and we're finishing the project. Real good news for the whole community. There's no further discussion. We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Instructional report. Yeah, several slides here, board, and some of them will make more sense than others, but I uh, want to show you for the second time in the state's history. The state has released for all school districts and it's public information, you go to the state site, look it up for any school district in the state, transfers. Since we're in the transfer business with schools, and for years that didn't happen, people transfer in, people transfer out. One problem with the state's data, it doesn't add, it doesn't add up. So if you try to add numbers, it won't add up. You'll say, well, there's missing kids. Well, the reason that is you've got homeschooled kids, you've got kids that are on, um, online programs, you've got kids that go to another school district, you've got kids that are, it's just, the parts and pieces don't add up, but it is sort of a snapshot of what's happening. So, for what it's worth, here's what the state put out. I, I wouldn't go to the bank on these numbers, but this is what the state has released to us. Um, if you look at the numbers, and I just gave you the raw numbers, kids that are transferring in from someplace else, from another school district. Actually, if you look at that, those are the numbers by area school districts, but if you want to look at percentages of population, then we jump right up to the top of this, because obviously uh, Plymouth is a lot larger school district, and even Greenman's a larger school district, but uh, we certainly are doing well there. These are kids that are coming into Argus every day, into our school district to go to school. So it's an interesting thing. So the next slide, these are kids that are not coming to school here. But they're not all transfer, it says transfer out, but they're not. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you have an Amish community that doesn't send kids to school. They're in that number. Let me say, say you have pe kid, people that are homeschooling their kids. They're in that number. Say people that are taking online classes at home. They're in that number. So actually the number of people leaving is significantly less than that, depending on the district. And if you look at percentages in that. So um, for what it's worth, that's what the state has given us on these numbers. But as I said, the numbers are really hard to make sense out of because there's a lot of different things involved there third slide on this, well, what are the net of those two? And actually, I'm thrilled where ours is because we have a lot of children that just don't go to public education. They're not transferring anywhere. And so we're winning the transfer battle significantly. But you look at some districts that are not winning that battle so significantly. If you look at that across the board, uh, Argus is doing very well in that comparison. So, was worth, I just thought I'd share that. And that is, these slides are the main reason our enrollment is increasing. The last two years, our enrollment's increased. And that's because of what's happening on these slides. So even though state's data is not good, it helps us reflect why we are growing. I think we can continue to grow in enrollment because of these slides. And as we keep sharing the good things that are happening for our kids in Argus, I think we can continue to grow these. That's the state's information on okay. And the other one I have on here, we need to approve, we approved the calendar a couple months ago. Let's go with that. 
And since that time, the state of Indiana has decided, the Indiana High School Athletic Association, they're going to rotate everything backwards one week next year. And this really affected a lot of districts because the state didn't realize districts approved their calendars way ahead. So the state's just made the decision, oh, we're going to rotate all our contests, all our sectionals, all our regionals, everything back one week next year. Well, they can do that, but that really affects if we don't take an action on that and other districts are looking at it all around us. All our kids are not going to be able to have a fall break because they're all going to be involved in these activities the week we scheduled for fall break. Now, lines right up. We had 98 kids that couldn't go on fall break if we don't edit our calendar for next year. So, um, do we have a copy of the new calendar? I don't. We will put that out tomorrow. So, yeah, we're simply moving it. Um, one week later. One week later to the week of October 29th. So, we're going to follow the state of Indiana, and I know surrounding districts that we compete with are doing the same thing to give as many kids the opportunity and coaches and teachers the opportunity to go on fall break to align with the state of Indiana. We've known that earlier, so we've done. So nothing changes but the moving of fall break next fall, one week later. And I know that's probably going to step on somebody's toes that already has airline tickets or something, but for the greater good, I think we need to do it as soon as possible, and we'll send out the new calendar immediately upon your approval. That's my recommendation to follow the IHSAA on this calendar. Then do we have a motion to approve the calendar edit, I'll call it, for change? So moved. Thank you. And a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion on the moving of fall break one week or one week later? You know, it's really just putting it back to a time frame we're used to. Yeah. If you were here at the other meeting, yeah. it actually was a week earlier than we were used to because that's kind of where all the schools had settled. Yeah. So now we're back to kind of that week of the 20th, 21st. I don't think it's going to be It an won't be a big all. deal. And basically, with, you know how calendars work, it, you gain sort of a day every year and every six, seven years is that right. happen. And you sort of have to align it with when the state does it or it gets to be chaotic. So all we're trying to do is just stay in staff and this should resolve it for another six or seven years. I think it's a good move. And we'll post it this weekend. Right. Yes. Uh, we have it ready to go. So with your approval, we'll get it out there so people can make plans. Hopefully. Next fall seems a long way away, but I'll, I'm sure people are starting to make plans. Ten months lead, and hopefully most people will be okay yeah. out. Okay, uh, no further discussion then? Okay, we'll call for a vote on the calendar change. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, 14, approval of claims. Good evening. Uh, we have a claim docket tonight of $582,197.03. That includes accounts payable and payable. So I ask for your approval on those claims. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Do we have a motion to approve claims? I move to approve the claims as presented. Thank you. A second? Okay, any discussion or questions? Okay, all in favor of approving claims, signify with an aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, financial reports. And we have some slides, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. I'm trying to end 2018, and I want to show the income, and we mentioned this a little earlier with our growing enrollment. You see the last 18 and 19, we have a tick up in income coming from the state. That's based on our growing enrollment. And uh, we sort of turned the corner on a projection going the wrong direction. So that's why enrollments are so important to us. As we look at our revenue from the state of Indiana, and actually the General Assembly and the governor are talking about more revenue to small schools. I hope that they follow through with that. They really need to do that. They've not treated small school districts very well the last few years. And I've actually met with a couple of uh, representatives and encouraged them greatly that you need to address over the hundred small school districts in the state of Indiana to help them stay financially solvent. So there's the revenue as we look into 2019. Now we'll look as we're closing 2018. Uh, here's our expenditures. Um, 
11 twelfths of the way through the year. We're going to be closing out 2018 very soon. We're about 2% of the to, uh, good and really looks healthy for the general fund. You see an uptick there. Um, one of the reasons you're seeing an uptick there, there are three payrolls in 2018 in November. Whenever we have twice a year that happens, there's three payrolls. That tightens it up, but uh, there won't be three payrolls in December. So really as we look ahead, and Jennifer and I were looking at it today, our best projection is we will not use any reserves at all to our best knowledge at this time. Looks like that uh, there will be no need to use any reserves to help the 2018 budget. That's really good news because a few years ago we projected that we'd have to use reserves at a steady pace and we've not had to do that. We don't want to do that, but the good news is the reserves are there if needed. But we want to really work hard to live within our means and I think 2018 Board, you've done a good job managing this. I think we're going to be in very good shape in our major fund, the general fund. It pays for all our teachers and education. Uh, next slide. The capital projects fund really looks healthy, and we've been able to uh, make some major uh, inroads there. Uh, a lot of our energy costs come out of the capital projects fund. And of course, we max that out every year, but the more efficient we can be with utilities and that uh, certainly saves money. This, fund is locally supported with property tax, fiscal institution tax, and um, bank taxes. So yeah, um, looks very healthy for 2018. And if you look, we were deficit spending. Board, great job, and we are not deficit spending. So good job as we close out 2018 in the capital projects. And transportation fund, same way. Uh, we've been able to manage that. Um, Fuel prices haven't hurt us any there, but that, that, that certainly helps because that's a big part of the transportation fund. It looks real healthy. So I'm really happy as we end 2018 when we took, talk about financial stability. Here's our rainy day slide totals. As of now, uh, we will project further. At the end of the month when we close, board, you gave us some direction on rainy day. We'll be sharing with our new board in January exactly where that is, but we anticipate that rainy day fund as we close out the 2018 budget. So good news there. And this is our cash reserves as of today. And uh, you, you see from 3.5 to 2.7, you look at an $800,000 project, I'm rounding things off, that's exactly why the difference is. But that will close too as we close out 2018 and we have some more reserves to place into this. So financial stability, that's a huge word to have effective education. And, I really compliment the whole Argus community on achieving this because this really makes it possible for us to have quality education all the way through the system. So good job. That's our financial report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to item 16, your comments. I think I shared my comments at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> so I'll leave it there. Hi. We'll go to uh, board comments. <clears throat> I'd like to start. Yep, I'll start with uh, um, Jeff. Thank you for being here tonight. Looking forward to having you on board. I think we're all, all excited about that. And glad to see you have a former teaching background. I think our teachers will appreciate that. And they incorporate more and more technology in the classroom. Ned, those that list of accomplishments that we went through, really, Ned was the driver behind those. Mm -hmm. um, the board sits up here as governance, oversight, and strategy. We don't execute. Um, we're not involved in the day-to-day, -day, should not be involved in the day-to-day -day running of the school. So th those items really are a direct reflection of Ned and his administration, um, and down to the teachers on, of what we've been able to get done. It's been a collective effort by the team here. It really has been. But thank you. And I'll accept it on behalf of the whole staff. Everyone's been involved. But Ned has driven the bus on a lot of it and brought to us experience that we needed, um, for example, with getting the evaluations up to date and, and just a lot of things that needed to be buttoned down. So now I feel like we're in a great place. Um, Brett, Kirk, Doug, the last meeting, um, it's been fun. I think we've worked well as a board. Monty and I came on at, at a pretty uh, stressful time for the school. 
school system, um, for our teachers, for everyone, right? Um, yeah, and it, it is what it is, but we're in a lot different place now, and we've managed through that, and we made a lot of great decisions, and put us, I think, in a good place to move forward and give our incoming board um, a little bit different uh, position to enter the board at. Goodbye to three great guys here. Appreciate your leadership. Two and a half great years, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, guys. If you're letting you two have the last time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote mine down, so this shouldn't take too long. But um, I really have enjoyed my time on the board. I was looking at eight years. The only other thing I've ever done for eight years was probably get my bachelor's degree. <laughs> 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 that was an associate's dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have enjoyed it. That was my first comment. There was a few uh, special years in there that maybe were a little bit more difficult to enjoy. But uh, overall, I think what I went through was um, an opportunity to grow and, and learn. And I think that's the best part that I've learned um, from that spot. I think one thing I've really enjoyed is as being a board member, strangely enough, I found is the times that I've disagreed, um, he's always been here, but that side of the table usually, whenever I've disagreed with someone on this board, I've enjoyed the fact that I always had to think about um, that I was probably wrong. And so, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, that's, that, uh, that's actually probably true, but I think what is nice is the fact that the way this has functioned is that we can sit here and disagree. One time right there, Kirk, at that table, Kirk and I disagreed, and he was right. And uh, I think that's what I've enjoyed, actually. It's, 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 very easy. it's very easy when everything goes well, but I think when we come here and you see us approving things, behind the scenes, there's been a lot of thought by especially that position right there, and we have to, uh, you know, we don't vote, but we hear and we say, I don't know if that makes sense in an individual basis back. And that's why um, people like Ned make really good decisions for this school. Lastly, I think I wrote them down. I've been here eight years and I wrote down six superintendents. And I think that's, that's somewhat of a challenge. Um, I think I'm speaking to one, the amount of time that many of us have put in outside of our normal time in this period. But I think the six superintendents, while we, um, Ned's been one of the best, um, I, I'd like to say that what I see is the administration of this school has a hard time screwing it up. Because there are teachers that work here who treat kids as if they were their own. Um, there are fans in the stands that treat, that know every kid as if it were their own. And I believe that's why sometimes we act inappropriately just like a grizzly bear, you're, when it's your kid, it's different. And so I think that's truly one of the reasons why sometimes we do things that are not appropriate. 
But I think from the teacher standpoint, if you if you go to that, it's because these people see that kid in that chair as a and uh, that's a great thing. It's one reason we came here, and uh, it was a great decision. Lastly, <laughs> I've enjoyed working with her. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, but I, I really do. Uh, there's not been a lot of board members, but I will tell you, this guy, when an issue comes up, he can remember back to 2009 and remember how it was treated as a basis and so on. And so he's very special. And uh, I've enjoyed it. Thanks, Pat. Hopefully, next week. Sounds like you need it. <laughs> so, thank you actually for giving me this opportunity. I've enjoyed it. Bring up. That's all you got. Yeah, bring up. Well, that'll be short. Uh, it's been an honor. It really has. Uh, I think you know what you get into when you walk into a position like this, but reality kind of has a way of smacking you in the face sometimes. But, you know, uh, it really has been an honor to serve on the board a roller coaster in certain ways. Um, but uh, nine and a half years well spent is what I would say. Uh, this place means a lot to me, and there aren't a lot of places on the planet that I would describe in that manner. So, uh, thanks for coming out. I hope that uh, everyone continues to support the new board. Uh, you know, the things are headed in a good direction now, but you know, the next challenge is just around the corner. You don't know what it may be, but uh, you've got some smart, de dedicated people who have been a part of this board for a long time. We've got some smart, dedicated people who are coming on to this board. Um, in many ways, it's a thankless task, but that's okay. You know, uh, it's not done for accolades. It's not done for, for uh, personal attention. You know, I, kids are number one. I mean, if you're not here for the kids, then there's probably better ways to spend your time. So that's all I got. Well, I think we do. Yes. Yeah.